Hello ladies and gentlemen, for those of you watching on the release day of this video, Merry Christmas! There has been a huge influx of patrons this last month and I have to thank all of you who support me on Patreon, it makes a huge difference. The final few videos in our Half Life Size series is just around the corner, however new restrictions, Christmas and a very busy end to the school term has meant that the portrait videos has been a little bit delayed. The plan is to release the first of two videos on the portrait next week. For this week, however, we'll go back to square one and make the armature. I'm sorry the regular schedule got a bit off track, but I do hope you enjoy this video, which is the genesis to it all. How to make an armature. Okay, so this brings me to the whole point of this video, which is building the armature that we will use when sculpting our half-scale figure. Now I know it took a while, but I felt there was a lot of things that I've glossed over in previous videos on YouTube that this would be a perfect platform for me to, to talk about and, and to show you guys. As I mentioned before, these videos here on Patreon will be a lot more in-depth than what, what you're used to on YouTube. To begin our armature, we will need a wooden board. This will serve as our base. A square wooden board is necessary if we are to use the planar system described above to its full effect. Remember, we want to orient the pelvis of our sculpture square to our wooden board, and then we'll, we'll orient our model's pelvis square to the model stand, or in this case, I took reference photos considering that. A simple board on its own would struggle to lay flat and would tend to bend and buckle. So a couple of wooden runners underneath stiffens up the board and gives it a little bit more thickness to screw screws into. The board doesn't have to be anything pretty by the way, as you can see I'm just using some old previously used and painted on plywood of some sort, I'm not really sure what type of plywood it is. All that really matters is that the board is square and will lay flat on, on your table and not wobble on you. Now if you have taken some measurements from your model, which I have done to ensure that I work in exactly half scale, then you can use these measurements to build your armatures at the right height. If you don't know or don't have any measurements, you can make some assumptions and go from there. I will show you how to create a figure without any proper measurements after we make the armature. Because I know the height of my model, I know the height at which I want the pole to enter my figure. The middle of my figure, which happens to be at the height of the crotch, and it is on most people, is around 77 centimeters. In half scale, that is around 39 centimeters. So you can use this trick. If you are making a figure in half scale and the model is 180 centimeters, you divide that by two, you get 90 centimeters, and that's going to be more or less where the bottom of the crotch is. The crotch sits below where I want my pole to enter, of course. The buttocks being slightly above the bottom of the crotch. So I know I want the pole entering into the side of the buttocks to be slightly taller than 39 centimeters. If the pole enters at the height of the crotch, the T fitting at the end of the pole will stick out below the crotch, which is not good, of course. We want no part of the armature with the exception of the pole to exit the figure. I also want to have room enough for a base and some wiggle room for mistakes. So I make the height of the pole around 45 to 50 centimeters. I'd rather make a little bit of a taller base than have to compromise and make a small figure to fit my armature. My horizontal pole's length is chosen so that it will reach more or less the middle of my board. I want my figure to be pretty much in the middle of my board. For no real particular reason, it just seems to me like it should be in the middle, I guess. And it'll mean that the whole sculpture and sculpture stand will be as balanced as it possibly can be. The pole will enter into the side of the buttocks and not into the lower back, for example, because the side of the buttocks has very little information that I will lose. Now, if I were to enter it into the, into the lower back, there's a lot of information there that will be very hard to recreate in whatever material I end up casting my figure in. But in the side of the buttocks, there's very little information, and so it's a lot easier to recreate that. And the forms are a lot bigger there too, meaning that they're a lot simpler to make in whatever material I will end up casting the figure in. The T fitting at the end is placed upright. It is there to give my armature something to be properly attached to. 
Attaching the figure armature to the pole without the teeth fitting wouldn't have been nearly as secure and would have been very, very difficult. My wire of choice when making armatures is almost always square aluminum armature wire. I choose square because I find it holds the clay a little bit better than the round, but I know it hardly matters. I suppose it says more about me than anything else. Let's thank today's sponsors, my Patreon supporters on Patreon, who have ensured the continued existence of this channel and allowed me to upgrade my gear bit by bit, making better looking and better sounding content for all of you watching. If you are interested in supporting the channel or perhaps interested in getting personal feedback on your sculptures from me, then Patreon is the place for you. You'll get in-depth feedback on techniques and how you can apply them to your own work. Anything sculpture related goes, we can talk about armatures, supplies, mold making, anything you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. So check it out, there's a link in the description below. And again, thank you so much to those of you who have given generously and supported me. It really means the world. The size of the armature is around half a millimeter. I tend to favor a fairly simple approach where the legs, the core of the body and the arms are made up of two wires. Because I only know the height of my figure, I can only assume the length of the arms. As long as I give myself plenty of extra length in the arms to allow for the width of the shoulders and a little bit of extra length for the arms, I should be fine. Splicing armature wire together is less than ideal, though it is possible. You can simply zip tie it together, but I'd rather avoid that. The length of my legs is not a concern, as the height of the T fitting shows me where I need to have the pelvis more or less. This was measured earlier. I also know I have playroom at the bottom to build a base. So as long as the armature wire reaches from the T fitting down to the bottom of the base, and I include plenty of extra length for the arms, I should be fine. Two hose clamps are used to attach the armature wire to the T fitting. Some people prefer to put the armature wire through the T fitting and fill it in place, hold it in place with epoxy putty. I don't like this approach because it means that I'm stuck with this armature. I like to be able to recycle parts and filling a T fitting with epoxy putty pretty much means that it's done for. If the armature needs to be cut from mold making, then I need to splice pieces, new armature wire pieces onto it to make a new figure. So I think it turns into a mess. I prefer a modular approach where pieces gets recycled and used again for new projects. Hose clamps are, are perfect for this approach. One length I know is the height of my figure. It's twice the height of the height of the crotch, twice the height of the T fitting more or less. And, and so the overall figure will end up being around 77 centimeters tall. The next piece I'll attach is the head. I can measure around 39 centimeters from the T feeding down and go 39 centimeters in the other direction upwards to find more or less where the top of my head will end up sitting. I make the piece of armature a touch longer than this as it can always be cut down later and it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. This piece of armature wire is attached to the T-fitting with the same hose clamps I used before to attach the arms and the legs. And this kind of keeps everything, consolidates everything together, makes sure that it's really, really sturdy. Once attached, I can measure again and make a guess at where the pit of the neck is going to be. It's very important if you have to make a guess at where the pit of the neck is going to be, if you haven't measured it, pit of the neck is essentially where the shoulders is going to come out from, it's going to be important that it is a conservative guess. Do not attach the arms too high up, as it might interfere later with where the pit of the neck ends up being. Placing the shoulders too low, attaching the arms to the head too low, in other words, leaves this decision for later when you can make a more informed decision. It is very easy to bend the armature wire upwards, but very hard to fix it if you have an armature wire coming out of the neck, for example. I use simple zip ties for this connection because I don't want to risk having the bulky hose clamp sticking out anywhere. In addition to the zip ties there will be wrapping wire to secure this connection.
Wrapping wire is then added to give the clay something to grab onto. Without the wrapping wire, the clay would slide on the surface of the wire and not attach properly. The wrapping wire is absolutely necessary and I think it's necessary in any scale. I've seen people use string and other materials for wrapping before, but if you ask me, it's best to keep it simple and just use thin aluminum armature wire. And the round wrapping wire contrasts nicely with the square, thicker wire of the rest of the armature, which is a nice touch. Let's take a quick second to talk about some updates that's been made to my Patreon page recently. Today, on November 7th, I'll be putting out exclusive Patreon content for the first time. Videos that you will only have access to if you are my supporter on Patreon. The first series we will embark on is the beginner's guide to figure sculpture. We will cover how to sculpt a standing nude female figure in contrapposto in half life size scale. I will cover everything from the armature, the sculpting and eventually the mold making. This will be the one stop for all the answers you'll need. This will be the one stop for all the answers you'll need for sculpting a standing nude figure. Whether you sculpt from life or from photo reference, we will cover how to work from both. One video will be released on the first Thursday of every month, starting on November 7th. The video will be longer than what you're used to seeing here on YouTube at around 30 to 45 minutes each episode. It will all be real time footage, no time lapses, and I will do my best to use a very linear process with clearly defined steps, making it both easy to follow and easy to do on your own. Any patron pledging $5 or more will get access to the videos. I'm excited to finally be putting out exclusive Patreon content to my patrons whose support is greatly appreciated. So check out my Patreon page to watch the full video by clicking the link in the description below. The last step before this armature is completed is sealing the wood with paint. We will be using water-based clay, so if we don't seal the wood, water will be drawn into the wood and dry out our clay and make the wood base rot. The simplest functional solution I could come up with was acrylic paint, which isn't the best solution in the world, but I've used it before and it works well enough. It's cheap, dries fast, etc. Just make sure you use a good thick layer of it so the water clay doesn't penetrate so the water from the clay doesn't penetrate through the paint. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share it with your friends and family. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.